Okay, so two episodes in one day. Yeah, I guess we're doing that. Um, especially when I've been kind of slacking when it comes to this podcast. But, you know, this episode, we're going to deal with rejecting extremes, embracing rational discourse, and making Animal Farm and Wizard of Oz analogies. So um, there is definitely oppression and struggle in this world, have no doubt about it. You know, we're hearing about it in the headlines every day. Um, But part of that struggle comes from the will of the people, unfortunately, whether they are subjugated or not, their will can easily become my enemy if it is threatening me in any significant way. And this is precisely why many people dislike the revolutionary rhetoric of leftists. And that's even if these same fearful folks might be falling for more nonsense from right-wingers. You know, it might be worse nonsense than um, whatever they, they think is scary about the left. But, you know, the simple fact is certain revolutionary tactics, um, as they are so often called, seem to actually risk losing every step of the way if um, people are just generally afraid of the consequences and, uh, you know, the propaganda from the right-wing media has people, you know, afraid of the left. You know, unfortunately, those who note this, you know, people like myself can easily be branded cowards or anti-revolutionary or whatever. So um, it's, it's an even more generic, though perhaps less extreme, version of the anti-revolutionary or counter-revolutionary label to be called, you know, a, a coward because it's, um, so it's sort of a personal insult. It's, it's almost non-ideological in some ways, you know, it's, it's like a playground bullying thing that you might hear, you know, like just being called a chicken. Um, the, the point is though, I will reject certain elements and tactics of the so-called left, just as I would of the right, if the ideas and approaches strike me as authoritarian or otherwise empty-headed and and inhumane, I will tend to critique them to the extent that it's, you know, relevant or possible, I suppose. And, you know, of, of course, nowadays, I would say the so-called left is definitely not a dominant force in the United States. So I'm not particularly afraid of it. But, you know, I do want to shed some light on, you know, where these uh, sorts of fears come from. Right now in America, there is an extremely dangerous infatuation with real radical fascist types under the name of Make America Great Again. And look, I have to tell you, conservatives out there, you know, if, if any of you are listening, you know, these uh, these far-right extremists are just like the common turn terrorist red brigades that were, you know, told are so bad in the Soviet Union. Or you could say they are like George Orwell's animal farm, you know, like they operate on that premise too. You know, they are not really revolutionary in the sense that I would suggest, but they definitely want to have an authoritarian system that crushes uh, any sort of political opposition. So like the severely abridged summary of Animal Farm says, quote, Animal Farm depicts a group of animals who rebel against humans and become their own masters. Things work smoothly at first, and the animals revel in their freedom and have equality. However, the pigs become power-hungry and become the new oppressors of the animals and become indistinguishable from humans. And that is exactly the premise that the far-right utopians will provide, really no different from authoritarian communism. And it's really weird that I should have to explain this to anyone. So, you know, like, because far-right ideology kind of proposes 
a, a type of equality only um, within a, uh, a certain group. You know, th they definitely emphasize rejecting outside groups, you know, like certain undesirable elements, whether it's a, a different race, uh, a different religion, you know, a, a different uh, sexuality, of course, as we are seeing with the uh, far right nowadays, you know, they're especially going after transgender people and othering them. But they still really somehow appeal to people's sense of equality um, j just within the uh, chosen group, I suppose. You know, the uh, classic formulation is that we're a special group. You know, the in-group is special. They're going to rise to the top. And, you know, presumably it's, it's rooted in some sense of traditionalism, you know, like we're going to restore greatness. And in a, in a lot of ways, it's a greatness that never really existed in the first place. But, you know, the, the power of nostalgia is that you don't really need facts. You have emotions to uh, guide you. So when, when Trump calls for the termination of the Constitution to overturn the 2020 election and reinstate him to power, that matters, you know, that's a very powerful statement. And recently he used very specific Nazi style rhetoric about rooting out the left. And of course, you know, he's called, called them vermin, you know, and of course what he means by the left too is anybody who like uh, ch challenges him in any way or makes fun of him or anything like that. He's discussed a purge of all federal employees with the aim to replace them all with loyalists to himself. And that matters too, of course. That would be a very powerful change. And of course, one of the things that fascists also would do is they would not only would they have loyalists, but they would also pass laws making the will of the dictator, the law of the land. So it'll be harder to challenge that once that's actually passed into law, because keep in mind, law is actually kind of a fiction. You know, it's a belief system. It's not, it's not real exactly. It, it only exists because people actually believe in it and they act upon the laws and policies. But if you've got like generation after generation of people who are, you know, willing to uh, gradually slide down an authoritarian path, down an authoritarian rabbit hole, well, they're going to be more susceptible to following this new way of life. It might seem new and exciting to them because they might decide, well, the, the old system, you know, with the old laws, was really uh, what, what was holding us back. You know, we've got this new leader, this strong man who's going to have the wisdom and the virtue. And I guess, uh, <laughs> you know, some of them think he's like all muscular and stuff like he's like he's a goddamn Rambo or something. You know, um, he's, he's going to set things all right. Of course, uh, Trump is not a bodybuilder, but, you know, you, you actually can find memes where they depict him as if he's a ripped action hero or something, which is just pathetic and sad and stupid. But some people probably seriously like that imagery. Like they actually think it's a powerful thing to share online or something. And of course, Trump is also obsessed with using death as a punishment now. And that matters too, whether it's drug dealers or the retired general Mark Milley, who he suggested should be executed for treason, you know, that matters. And looking at the drug dealers part, keep in mind that even though not all of us are drug dealers, uh, it would still affect ordinary people. You know, I would like to say, oh, I, I could never have been a drug dealer or a meth dealer or something like that. But I'm honest and knowledgeable enough to say that well, maybe if my life had gone just a little bit differently, 
I could have actually gone down that road. You know, plus, of course, you know as well as I that plenty of these MAGA people themselves have used and even dealt drugs, just as they've done so many other things that Republicans will claim to stand against. But hypocrisy is a high virtue, and the far right is all about embracing punishment rather than incentive. So you bomb problems, or you beat them, shoot them, lock them up, or sometimes only pay lip service to solving problems uh, during an election year, you know, when you're a little bit more supposed to actually address issues here and there. So you, you never try to solve them peacefully through education and nonviolent social policy. You know, the, uh, the idea is that you're going to get tough on, on all these different fronts. So you don't need to be a badass anarchist, feminist, socialist, or communist to disagree with these fascist philosophies that are prevalent among Republicans. And, you know, that, that's something that needs to be emphasized. You, you really just have to be a normal person, a relatively normal person. So here's something I will say, putting aside my critiques of the left or the right, there is a deep freedom in the ideas of the left, and in my experience, you know, an appeal to it. It's a sort of general philosophy and sometimes tactic that encourages people to be revolutionary and build counter structures, so to speak. You know, just like the far right, it kind of can promote a new society that emerges from the old. You know, it can be a movement that encourages people to believe that change is possible and not believing that change will come through external strong opposition from the system, but maybe believing that change will come through internal pressure uh, applied within the system and against the system. And, you know, you can have a true revolutionary ideal or the appearance of one if you're you know, seeing things through that sort of, I don't know, ideological framework. And it can be a powerful uh, feeling. And the movement, you know, the leftist movement attracts people who are desperate to fight against oppression and who are optimistic about the future. However, at the same time, again, if that becomes some authoritarian strain of communism or something like that, with adherence to a strict Stalin-esque leader, you can calm me out. I'm, I'm just not going to be into that. I want a more direct democracy. And I think that is possible if we get authoritarian impulses in check. It's not going to happen through brainwashing and sheer force of will. That very quickly becomes the opposite of direct democracy. We need what the Wizard of Oz characters needed, you know, a heart, a brain, some courage, and a place to call home. We don't need the man behind the curtain pulling all the strings for us. And uh, I think we have the power all along, you know, just like in The Wizard of Oz. Maybe it's not so simple as clicking our heels together and saying there's no place like home, but I do think it is simpler than one might think it is. We just need more pieces to fall into place, and I will drop the Wizard of Oz analogies because they distract from the point and get silly, perhaps. But, you know, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of a way to work the yellow brick road into this, um, but I can't. So, um, yeah, this might not be the best episode, but I, th I think it has a point anyway. I probably have addressed these uh, general topics before, but, you know, I guess I'm kind of doing it differently this time and with a few more recent pieces of information attached, you know, regarding what Donald Trump has been up to. So, all right. Have a wonderful day.